for Steven not to know what's going on. Let me try to get uh, a fish without a, you know, you can't just rip off the fin. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> rip off the fin. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Let me make this fish exactly like the other, like Gus. <laughs> Yeah, it's like you didn't have a, a right. nurse to uh, chloroform the fish. Like, okay, scalpel. <laughs> hey, Internet. It's Paul. It's Matt. The Dork Lords. We are here talking about Moon Knight. Season 1, Episode 2. Summon the Suit. We open. With Stephen Grant waking up back in his London flat. Ankle tied to his bed. Which means... That after defeating the jackal in the museum, Mark bothered to walk Stephen back to his bed, cover the <laughs> sand, tape the door, and bind his ankle. I mean, dude, you just showed him who you are. Anyway, okay, but he, he did the trappings. He, well done, sir. <laughs> oh, um, he almost got away with it. That's right. <laughs> Good point. Um, so, Stephen uh, goes back to the museum. Uh, sees the security footage, which doesn't show the jackal. No. And he gets fired for vandalizing the bathroom. Uh, yes. That's that's our opening. Uh, we end with Mark taking over control of the body, uh, confining Stephen's personality. And after a conversation with Kanshu, which we'll talk about, uh, we see a drunken Mark look out of a window at the pyramids while Stephen looks on from a mirror. Now, I think he can handle his liquor. You know, he may have been sobering up. Okay, he might be sobering up. He had a <laughs> bottle in his hand, and he was sitting on the floor. That's why I yeah, was like, Yeah, but, eh, you maybe. know, he, he was awaking from a stupor. Doing him some stupor. <laughs> uh, the mirror is cracked, which makes me wonder if maybe he got another fight with Steven, maybe in the uh, apartment, or, or whatever. Or um, maybe uh, that was just a homage to perhaps to Apocalypse Now. Oh, oh good. That's right. Um, so, they're in Egypt to stop... Harrow from finding and resurrecting Amit. That's how we end. Paul, yes. what did you think of episode two? I enjoyed it. Um, we're getting a little more now of Mark Spector, really. And oh, although yeah. his character is challenged, so in a way, uh, it's good that we uh, got to see Stephen first. Um, because someone who's on a mission uh, can sometimes would be a character that would be, in a way, less enjoyable you know it's I, like yeah you know, it's I got like you. i've got to protect layla i've got to you know fulfill my debt you know it's like oh my gosh this is heavy or <laughs> you know poor sad sack steven you know uh so yeah i think they made the right choice of where to start but yeah i do want to start feeling for mark a little more okay um i think there's know. some moments in there which we'll, we'll talk about where May, based on what I saw with, between Steven and Layla, we get a little hint at the backstory of Mark and Layla, which I think maybe maybe lends some thought to the fact that Mark is a sympathetic character, but we'll, we'll talk I about know, I'm not saying he's not sympathetic. I'm oh, saying, yeah. will I'm, I enjoy seeing him? I got you. All right. Fair <laughs> you enough. Know? It's like, now I'm in charge. You know, And, and it might be like, you know, oh, it, it's a good thing that uh, Steven's there in whatever mirrors are around to add color. Do we think this um, is the reason we see him sitting next to the bed and it, like the room looks like it's a mess? Like he did, I don't know, there's stuff like a little end table turned over or something. Yeah. Um, do we feel like it's like when, if he goes to sleep, if he, Mark, goes to sleep, does that mean that Stephen can take over at that point? In other words, is he trying to stay awake so that Stephen can't? And enter and take control? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, th the thing that occurred to me, though, for that period was it was like, snap, now you're in this other place. And he didn't seem to know. So, uh, you know, was there a third personality? And there is a third personality there in the is, comics. Right? So, you know, or was it just Conchu? Like, look, I'll just take over now. Right. Is it just a... <laughs> Well, also, it's a story convenience, right? You just, yeah. who cares about the traveling? Just cut the it traveling out. It could be, out. yeah. It could just hey, be, you're like, you know, it's like, okay, let's go, yeah. you know. Uh, um, but no, that's interesting. You're right. Where, I, what, are the, what are the rules yeah. for when Stephen can pot potentially attempt to take back control? Now that they're in Egypt, my wife, Jackie, uh, extra interested. She really enjoys uh, Egypt and Egyptian uh -huh. mythology. Uh -huh. She actually, years ago, she, she attended a dig in Saqqara, Ah. Uh, and she had a particularly uncooperative camel named right? Fatima. 
So um, I just, if I just say the word Fatima around Jackie, <laughs> she kind of just starts shaking her head. <laughs> it's, like, it's all it takes. It's all it takes. Fatima. Okay. Ah, flashbacks. Anyway, so, um, but yeah. So Egypt. I expect that's what we're going to see in episode three. Will be focusing. We've seen some stuff from the trailer of him in the in the deserts, you know, right. at night and stuff. So I think that's that's what we're seeing next as they search. Uh, so Harrow now has the Scarab Compass, and the Scarab Compass is apparently leads to the Tomb of Amit, and they're going to try to get there without the Compass uh, ahead of Harrow. I assume the idea is that Harrow wants to get there to resurrect Amit. They want to get there to stop that resurrection. Correct. Um, I, I learn assume. A little bit more about Amit. Yeah. Um, Amit's plan sounds a lot like, what was it, Operation Insight? The um, Hydra plan in uh, uh, Winter Soldier, which is like, hey, we'll just kill everyone proactively that we think is going to be oh, bad. yes, right. Like, I had it, it was like, boop, 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 target everybody from space and kill all the bad people yes. ahead of time. You know? Yes, with less metaphysical, uh, you know, right. judgment, but yes. <laughs> right, she's more metaphys- <laughs> metaphysical Hydra, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But I will say this, Paul. Yes? Something we learned from this. Uh, what, Harrow, what did we learn? Yeah. Harrow must be the hero of this story. Uh, never mind the fact that he endorses killing kids, um, because we see him kicking a soccer ball, and you can't be bad if you kick a soccer ball, <laughs> especially right? if you have glass in your shoe. I mean, that's like he was really avid about soccer. I appreciate that. Uh, so okay. he can't be he can't be a bad guy. Uh, oh, um, okay, that's interesting. I joke, but <laughs> uh, by the way, oh, here's some, something interesting. Uh, I'm a I'm a soccer guy. Dorks on sports. U.S. soccer team back in the World Cup. They missed it in 2018. They just got uh, announced their group. I think they can get out of their group. Paul, this is your Dork Lord prediction. Come this November, uh, the U.S. gets to the quarterfinals. All right, there you go. Anyway, and wow. that's your World Cup update. Uh, brought thank to you. By you. <laughs> I thought um, it was impossible for me to care about anything less than I cared about Lord of the Rings. <laughs> but apparently... There is, there is something that I can care less about, and that's soccer. <laughs> is that the other thing that uh, Harold professed a love for? That I know it, that ensures that, it, that he's the fact not... that it, it's literally like a like a two second scene of him kicking a soccer ball. And I'm like, oh, that's it. That's all it took. Uh, 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 next thing is going to quote the Cimmerillion or whatever it's called. <laughs> Very good, well done, sir. I know. Where um, did that come from? Oh my God! You, you, <laughs> you, what have you done? What have you done to me? We actually had uh, one of our one of our awesome commenters, Thomas, asked wow, thank me, you, Thomas. Thank you, Thomas. Asked me how I would torment you by connecting this somehow to Lord of the Rings. Well, um, no, thank you, and Thomas. So I was like, Thomas, <laughs> it's this episode. It's easy because I'm I feel fairly confident the showrunners uh, for a, a as a model for the relationship between Mark and uh, Stephen probably used Smegel Gollum. Everything comes back uh, to Lord of the Rings, baby. There you go. Uh, okay. so there you go. All thank right. you. Thank anyway. you. All right, back on that, track. Thank back you. Track. That was torturous. Thank you. That was... Big news in this episode was that we know that Harrow used to be Conchu's avatar. That kind of came yes. as a shock yes. to me. Like, oh, okay. And it even... He suggests something... He says something like, I was Conchu's avatar before you were. Like, in other words... Yes. It sounded like right before. Yeah. You're, you were the next one after me. Um, what do you? I have a theory on maybe how this all came out, but what do you, do you have thoughts on the timeline? No. How this works? Okay. <laughs> I mean, for me, that right before, I guess you could say it was implied, but I'm not willing to accept that it wrote. Okay. I also I'm I'm wondering if avatars get an, an advanced life, or are they just like, hey, you're a guy, you're gonna live a typical lifespan, but you're an avatar during that. Yeah, time. I don't know. That's a good question. Um, so my thought is because we did see, um, well, again, could be all a lie, but we see footage apparently of Mark and Mark, he says, oh, it's not what you think, but he doesn't say I wasn't in Egypt. Apparently he was in Egypt at one point and it involved killing some archeologists, whether he killed them or not, he was there and something bad happened to some archeologists, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. we, we kind of get that idea. Mm -hmm. I think what, whatever that was, that, that event perhaps, was what uh, is the event that perhaps at that time maybe Harrow was still working for Khonshu. Mark Spector, who knows what, he wasn't an avatar yet, perhaps, shows up, 
Uh, maybe Hero is killing off these guys or something. Somehow betrays Kanchu in that moment. There's a fight. Mark is about to die. We find out that Mark says, hey, we owe Kanchu our lives. So it sounds like maybe he was dying. Hero had left Kanchu's service. And so Kanchu, as a kind of desperation, takes this dying guy, Mark Spector, as his avatar. And so there's a betrayal. The betrayal from Hero and the taking on of the avatar for Mark happens at the same time, like the same event, perhaps. I think I would prefer it if uh, they weren't contiguous. Okay. Um, but we'll see. Another quote that I'm reading way too much into, and I'm overanalyzing the hell out of, <laughs> but, but it's where Kanchu is talking to Mark, and he yes. says something like, you said you said he wouldn't be a problem or something like that. He's talking they made about a Mark's number of references. He said it's dependent upon uh, Mark being able to keep uh, Stephen out of it. Right. So, again, this is not Their definitive. Deal. But it suggests that Stephen, the Stephen personality predated Kanshu, uh, or Mark becoming av an avatar. Perhaps. Like, I mean, the thing that, that uh, perhaps uh, makes me think that I've been wrong about uh, how these personalities work is that Mark describes himself as the avatar as if that was he was created for that purpose. Maybe he's just saying that his old identity or... or his old value is gone now because I mean I always assumed and I think the story of the uh, the comics is that he's a mercenary and he did terrible things right. and you know we know that he died uh, and that Kanchu brought him back to life so um, you know maybe he was saying that's when he died actually maybe that's what he's saying now he's an avatar and he's no longer I got you you're wondering if that means that he's not the primary personality in other words right yeah okay. I think um, I think he is though. I mean, I feel like with the Layla relationship, that she doesn't know Mark, Stephen. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. I think you're right. It's just uh, it's weird the way you phrase that. It's hard to see those statements as making sense any other way. I got you. Okay. Yeah, you're right. They're 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 hiding the ball a little bit. It's interesting though that he apparently was dormant or he was able to keep it because we don't know how long he was involved with Layla. Right. Right. Uh, but so, there's that line that um, that uh, Harrow has where he says like, "Oh, I, did ha did Kanchu choose you because yes. he could break you, or because you are already broken?" Right. Uh, and I think the suggestion is, "Oh, there was a guy with a fractured personality. Maybe mm -hmm. I can control him better." Uh, I know that the the showmakers have said, or, or at least alluded to the fact that uh, you know the original character is Jewish, and um, you know uh, has ties in Chicago. Uh, as a Jew, Chicago. so yes, uh, so yeah, so apparently that's going to come out, and uh, Mark Spector might be more the person who who has that personality. So right, and we've seen that there are at least cast members who have the last name of Spector, but I don't think we see too many that have the last name of Grant. Right. Presence. Yes, that's true. So yeah, that was um, interesting. One thing that uh, that Layla mentioned that oh, now you're, you know, because a lot of people feel like we keep hearing this one-sided conversation between him and his mother. Yeah, um, yeah, she says, it, oh, you're talking it, to your mom again. And the way that he uh, speaks about it, too, uh, sounds like um, like he's talking to an answering machine. Yes, and also he says that's his mom's flat. Like, right. somebody's paying for this flat for him. Yeah, well, it's one of those situations where you sort of say, um, like, how could he afford to, you know, live there <laughs> on a gift shop guy's paycheck that, that's one of those and, things that typically in shows though you're like that's a really nice place that yes you're yes in. yeah so yeah they may have just figured eh, that's the way tv is but that's right um you know if it's his mother's place and well you know if he's right about that yeah i mean is it something where mark specter has set up a whole thing there almost certainly is not a mrs grant so who is the mother character mm. that he's talking to if there is one um but it also, there's a couple of things in there. So, yeah, he's talking to his mom, which uh, Layla finds interesting. Stephen's favorite poet is Layla's favorite poet. Yes. And the way that she kind of comes back in with that, the implication is that's not Mark's favorite poet. Right. Right? She's like, oh, what are you talking about? That's my favorite poet. Yes, yes, um, yes. And when they, because so her whole subject, she shows up, she tracked him via his phone, and she's got divorce papers. He's supposed to sign the divorce papers. And yes. it's Stephen instead of Mark. And so Stephen's like, I'm not, I wouldn't divorce you. Um, 
which again is like it's interesting. It seems some like people have pulled that out to suggest that he was coming to some sort of, uh, you know, I have some memory of you, or I have some. Mm. And, and I was just saying he's obviously smitten with her and he feels a connection to her yep. and so he can't imagine anyone wanting to divorce her is what that means I agree I agree that it's not a, a memory but I do think maybe what we're seeing is he's, he likes her poetry he would he personally wouldn't divorce her he has a relationship with his mom and maybe this is and he also is he has a very strong moral code uh Maybe this is just an idealized version, which is what Mark aspires to be. You know, like Stephen is a, this is what I would like m me to be. I've, I've done mm -hmm. bad things in my life. Um, I'm, I, I have a bad relationship with my wife. Uh, although, well, it's not bad, but it, I'm divorcing her because I want to try to help her, I guess. I know he, right. it's a weird relationship. Complex. That's interesting. Yeah, uh, that's an interesting way of thinking that perhaps... Uh, you're making me think that you're suggesting that Mark Spector sort of created this character as a, a sort of like a retirement plan or something. You know, like once right. I'm or, done, I mean, maybe it was even subconscious. It wasn't a, an intentional thing, but somehow he created this this idealized version of him of himself according to him. You know, right? Um, sure. Yeah. I mean, yes. I mean, uh, well, maybe what his psyche needed. So it's like yeah. you know, oh, because. Of this experience, I have to have some sort of separation between uh, who Mark Spector has become and, uh, you know, what I want for, you know, his personage. Yep. What he yep. wants for his personage after all this is done. He's willing to leave that, you know, and he's ended his relationship with Layla, partly to save Layla, but, you know... Um, you know the penance of you know wanting to do well. He may be thinking that you know ultimately that'll be the end of his of that persona. Right, that's a good point. Um, and so we see, yeah, Kanshu is using kind of the cudgel of, hey, if you don't cooperate, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna co-opt Layla as my next avatar, yeah. basically, right? And so that's what's making Mark kind of toe the line. Even it seems like he is somewhat reluctant to do. He says something like he may do a lot of bloody things or something like that. Like he's he's doing things that he probably wouldn't want to do otherwise, but he feels like he has to do them for Kanchu. Yeah, I mean that's what I'm getting out of it. I mean I don't know. I sort of took at it as um, you know he's come back from the dead and he did bad things and now he's got to atone. You know that's the pure aspect of that. Okay. Um, I mean because he's also know. like, hey, I got one more gig and then you let me go, right? Like he's trying to like do some kind of penance to get out of it. I think he wants to be done. Well, I don't think that's how he's phrasing it, although he may be thinking of that way. Um, Arthur Harrow, was, I think, was the one who sort of phrased it that Certainly way. Certainly did, right. So, Always one you know, more thing. That yeah. might, be, might be how uh, Kanshu deals with people by, by doing that sort of manipulation. One way or another, we see that Kanshu is not necessarily an, uh, oh, the beneficent god. No, he's not a, he's certainly not. He's got he's got some issues for sure. He's, he certainly does. Yes, and it's interesting because he he brings it up again about how he's, you know, the the whole the, the difference between Amit and Kanchu. Harrow spells it out, and Kanchu somewhat agrees with him basically. So we get the idea that's accurate. Yeah, that Kanchu judges the guilty after they've done stuff bad stuff, and Amit judges them before they've done the bad stuff, so they don't do the bad stuff. Hey, and so the world's better for it. And one thing we haven't seen. Uh, you know, we've seen Moon Knight in pursuit of, well, trying to protect this uh, uh, artifact from uh, yeah. from uh, Ahmet, or at least from from Harrow, anyway. Um, but we haven't seen sort of like a mission to, you know, punish the, you know, it's <laughs> right, punishing, great point. you know, creatures. <laughs> that he's still, he's still Indiana Jonesing and it. And people, he's not yeah, people. Uh, attacking him, pushing them out of the way, or whatever. But we don't see so much, you know. Ah, he's punishing the wicked. We don't. Yeah, you know. this feels almost like a sub quest. If he was in a video game, it'd be like, okay, well, also with some, punishing the wicked's great, but we also need you to find the scarab so if you can go yeah. grab. <laughs> I wonder if maybe because again, where this Kanchu character seems pretty conflicted uh, morally, uh, <laughs> that maybe maybe the reason he's so anti. Emmett coming back because I assume if Amit comes back, Amit kills whatever does a Thanos and kills half the world yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, maybe that means that that gets rid of Kanchu's job. 
like Kanchu can't punish these people afterward because they've already been dealt with. So it it, it diminishes his sphere of influence. Like I want to punish the guilty. If you right. punish them before they're guilty, I can't do my job. So that's why I want to take you out. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's, in other words, maybe the motivation isn't like, "Hey, Ahmed's going to do a really bad thing, and I want to stop it." It's like, "Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> it's, it's it's my career. You're you're interfering <laughs> with my job here." It's interesting. I hadn't thought of it from that perspective. Uh, certainly. I feel like we're not going to get a lot of... We're not going to see flashbacks into Kanchu's life, is what I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, he's the uh, he's the uh, the voice from on high. But typically, one thing that I, I think of with characters like this is if they've got, uh, you know, sort of like um, Quantum Leap and uh, things like that, where it's like, ah, you've got something to do and you're trying to get towards an end, you know, like, is this my final job? You know, uh, will that be bit, uh, not bit, would that be uh, a part of the character of, of Moon Knight is, you know, if he's, you know, I'd rather him not be always thinking about, I hope this is the last job. Ah, uh, okay. I hope this I is the you. last job. Uh, Hoping you know, this if he just be settles into. The next um, leap home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Mr. Knight is a version of Moon Knight in yes. the comics. Their yes. interpretation is that. Mr. Knight is Steven's interpretation of the costume. So he's like, summon the suit! Yes. And his version, he's like, summon the suit? Okay, I'll wear a suit. And so he summons the suit. It looks pretty cool. I like it. I like, I like his use of it. Uh, I like that he's called a psycho Colonel Sanders. Yes. One thing I'm not clear of, and uh, I don't think that it's uh, sort of been spelled out, is um, when we saw the uh, security footage of... Uh, you know, yeah. first it was Steven and then it became Mark who went right. to the camera. Did he lose the suit in order to look at the camera? Or right. is that how the camera sees him when he's in the suit? I, I feel like the people that... Because we saw people on the street watching Mr. Knight fight in this episode. And they, I think, from their point of view... Yeah, I guess if they we were see the suit and suit. we don't see the creature, then that's the sort of true understanding of what's occurring that's how it looks to people who aren't involved in it at all and I Layla, was a little confused I was confused yeah. at the uh, the footage in that it felt like in real time when we watched the first episode I thought that the jackal was knocking stuff over as it was racing for him and like mm. it destroyed the bathroom I don't think mm. he was destroyed all the bathroom so it's like if you were to see that on video footage you would yeah. see like vase suddenly break right but, Seem as though we're near. I mean, there would be almost like proof that weird things are happening that Steven's not responsible for. But well, it was know, interesting maybe... that, uh, you know, until that fight uh, between, um, you know, what is it, Steven in the suit and that creature and Layla being okay. caught in between, we might have been able to say, it's all on his mind. I know. I know. <laughs> but you're right. No, Layla, Layla throws the glass which has water and so she, and she sees gets an outline of the creature and knocked out by the creature she's attacked by it also the people like on the bus and stuff they don't see the jackal but they see no. him on the street which yes. places him at that time and place in the street it's not like he's dreaming it in other words right, there's yeah. a guy that he's there yeah. and then Layla proves that there's something attacking him and he's able to uh, um, stop the ongoing progress of a car Right, you know, which right. uh, humans aren't really designed to do. They're not designed to do. Uh, so yeah, we've seen trailer footage of Stephen in a mental institution, and there's a rumor that there's going to be people trying to convince him that it is all in his head. Right. Uh, but there is zero percent chance. There's yeah. a zero percent chance. Well, right, because right, you're not working for them, so you know you <laughs> won't be there to say <laughs> no. You, it really is. It's on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, besides the fact that what we just said, which is like, there's pretty good proof that other people, we have third party witnessing of these events. Yes. Uh, it's just a terrible story idea. <laughs> so you just wouldn't do it. I mean, <laughs> this is a this is a character in the MCU. It's a it's an anthology series essentially about superheroes. You're gonna tell me that Marvel's gonna dedicate an entire season to this new hero just to undercut it be like he's just crazy at the end they're like no, <laughs> all right. like, no he's a fun mentor wasn't it pantheon. yeah <laughs> I, I could imagine in another context it might work 
I, although I'd have to, I'd shake my head a little bit, but <laughs> certainly not in this context. There is a zero percent. You're like, you're so <laughs> unhappy Legion, and happy at the Legion. same time. Like I'm right, but oh. So uh, it is not all in his head. Um, when the time comes that somebody's trying to convince him of that, hopefully he can uh, shake that off quickly because that is not uh, where this is going. Um, you had mentioned a little danger. Uh, when we in our last recap, you were like you were worried that when, like for instance, somebody like Layla might come in, that we'd have this like, I don't believe you, you're Mark, and they would be this like uh, annoying. Yeah, and we yeah, got yeah, we yeah. started to get that. Yeah, and I feel like thankfully she knows about the suit. Thankfully she knows about the background enough that she. Wasn't and I guess like, thankfully she was like, okay, if you're still doing this when your life is actually in danger. Yeah, then I believe that you're. <laughs> I actually, actually believe that you're like this. Yeah, sometimes it's sort of like, you know. But um, yeah, uh, yeah, it becomes a question though about uh, them and their adventures. Um, that she didn't have any clue that he had this uh, aspect during that time. That's a great point. Now, great point. the you know, whole it's time not, it never in came other up. Other stories. Of people who have this disorder, sure. Um, they sometimes, you know, you, you have a character living prominent, be a prominent character for years. Okay. So that's not out of the realm of possibility in terms of how this uh, disorder has been. You know. Yeah, no, you're right. There's a lot of unanswered questions about how long Stephen's been a part of Mark. The fact that Stephen doesn't remember that Mark exists, but Mark seems to know about Stephen. Right, like that, it doesn't seem to work both ways, or it didn't at first. Stephen's like, "Who? What are you, Mark? Right. What are you talking right. about?" But Mark seems to be like, "Hey, Stephen, give me control." I like, like Mark seems to know a lot more about the situation than Stephen. Does. Right. Yeah, but, but yeah, and perhaps that suggests that what we saw with um, Stephen being sort of suppressed but watching is perhaps how Mark is most of the time, because um, he was telling him, "You get used to it," you know, and right. so. Maybe, uh, and, but he did say it was sort of different. But yeah, because he's able to do things. He's able to like, let me make this world the way it's supposed to be for Steven not to know what's going on. Let me try to get uh, a fish without a, you know, you can't just rip off the fin. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> rip off the fin. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> let me make this fish exactly like the other, like Gus. <laughs> Yeah, it's like you didn't have a, wow. a nurse to uh, chloroform the fish. Like, okay, scalpel, <laughs> scalpel. <laughs> okay, we've only got we've only got thirty minutes till he wakes up. Let's go. Come yeah. on. <laughs> we also see him talk again to the uh, statue, human statue. Um, that that character is obviously yes. going to be, I think, a recurring one. You mentioned yeah, this yeah, from the yeah. comics, so yeah, um, he uh, yeah. Well, and it's it's. Uh, you know what uh, Chekhov's mime or something is <laughs> like. I feel like he's got. Right, here's a, he's, yeah, right. He's got to say is, something eventually. Like, okay, that's it. I've had it. Where were they in London? I assume they were in London. So he gets picked up by the cops, but they're not cops. Right. They take him to this village that Harrow. It's his cult village somewhere in London. Like it's Chelsea or something. Like some some subdivision of London is now. It's possible in, they're well. Arrow they have the town. equipment of cops. I think they could be cops, but they're not good cops. You know, they're okay. they're, right. they're like disciples cop. of uh, okay. Harrow. They're both cops and cult members. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like because yeah. the person in the museum was one of them. You know, so Stephen said his name like, "Oh, you too. Come on." Watching the second time, I was. I was like, oh yeah, the the HR guy for the museum is definitely a cult member. Like that guy. Like he was first he was like, oh, on the surface he's very nice. Uh, but there's a couple of things about it. One, he's like, uh, oh, check your check to make sure you're not taking anything with you. A la do you have the scarab on you? That's what he uh, sure. wants, is he wants okay. the scarab. Okay. Um he uh suggests he contact these health professionals and we right. know that he's going to be institutionalized sure. later yeah. and I think against his will it seems okay. like he's uh, fighting against it I think in other words we'd like to keep you where we can control you uh, so okay. I mean I think I feel like I feel like on behalf of the cult they're also because also he's like look we're not going to call the cops we're not going to press charges on you and right. yet the cops show up a few hours later at his door is like right. you took something from the museum so right. I feel like 
Because okay. as you said, everyone in the museum seems to be in the cult. <laughs> <laughs> it would almost make more sense, you know, it would less sense if he wasn't in the cult. It seemed like the, the majority <laughs> of people in that museum got the little <laughs> tattoo. So anyway, uh, they take they, the the cult folks take him to this, you know, it's an it's an Amit paradise apparently. Mm. Um, but I'm just like, where is this? And does this suggest he's got more than these? Like we saw him, in apparently hungry in the. Episode one, right? He had a village out, you know, right? Yeah, yeah, someplace. So, does he have a series of these villages? And does he? Yeah. How much mm. time does he spend in each one? He seemed mm. to know everybody in this one. Maybe it's because. Well, maybe he certainly suggested that you know he'd had an effect on that neighborhood, right? He said it was uh, riddled with yeah. crime before right. they had sort of took it over. Yeah, um, but now so. they grow tomatoes. They have yes. goats. Yes, yes, right. Anyway, it's just interesting. Like, I wonder how big right. that had to be. Is. That had to be an improv, right? It's not scripted. <laughs> Goat, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just interesting. Like, does he have a city in, you know, Germany and a city in Wales and a city in America yeah. and a city whatever? It's like, well, you know, all your best cults do. Right, they do. It's, it's true. Maybe he connects to them, you know, somehow psychically. Or they have telephones. I'm interested also to know who is the uh, avatar that betrayed Amit. I'm still interested in that. I think okay. that's important. All right. I still feel like that's a thing. Like, mm. But anyway, uh, because Amit got buried. And obviously, sure. I guess being buried means Amit has no real power. And mm. somebody, wanna, somebody screwed you, over Amit. You want to know who the Brutus was. Right, right. And we see also we get more rules. Okay, 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 okay. Rules right, about the Bluto. world. <laughs> That's different. That's Bluto. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, we get the rules that Kanshu can't really affect the world that much. Can do like wind and knock over trays yes, of lentil yes, soup. Yes, yes, yes. But that's about it. Basically do the, um, what was it, uh, ghost. You know, like the, the ah, rules yeah. for go. Like I can, yeah. oh, if I concentrate hard yeah. enough, I can <laughs> push a notebook or something. Yeah, or Beetlejuice. Um, Right, right. So anyway, um, I, I really enjoyed this episode. I thought it was uh, I thought it was very good. I, I, maybe I liked it even better than the first one. So quality. I liked it better than the first one. Well, so, so has it or cautious? You know, we'll see. Okay. I mean, yeah, right. a lot of stories. You know, either their second act doesn't work as well as it could, or the third act ends up letting you down. So uh, I got good you. First I got act, you. though. You know, and I and yeah, I care you. about. Um, Finding more about this, you know, how this is going to work, you know. I agree. I agree. And, you know, we're back here talking about episode three. That's halfway through the season. Yeah, that's so true. So if we're still if we're still as high on it then, that's a that's a nice a nice bar to reach. So yeah, yeah, fingers yeah. crossed. Yeah, um, it's a benefit of yeah. a short season. So good. So, uh, so far, so good. We'll watch, we're going to be back talking about the season finale of mm. Severance, yep. which also was just fantastic. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about that. And we'll be back talking about episode three. So right. um, thank you as always, Paul. Appreciate it, good sir. You're welcome. And we'll see everybody next time. Bye. Bye.